are you doing today? My name is Adeleke Adeshino. I'm an emergency medicine resident at St. Luke's Hospital. Well, today, I would like to share with you the secrets of how to get into medical school. And that's what brings us into how do we get into medical school? Huh? Wow. You know, if you're probably watching this video right now, you're probably wondering, Ah, oh, man, I really want to go into medical school, but there's all this information floating around and I don't know what to do. It's going to boil down to a few things you need to know. All right? So I'm going to share a little bit of my experience with you and also encourage you and inspire you that you can do it. So before we begin this video, tell yourself right now, I, say your name, I'm going to be a doctor. You have to confess it. You have to be motivated and have the desire that you can do this. And then I'm going to show you the secret. So, how do you really get into medical school? Well, in the United States, we have a lot of medical schools. We have allopathic medical schools and we have osteopathic medical schools. Allopathic and we have osteo Pathic medical school and allopathic medical schools give out the degree known as doctor of medicine call that MDs and osteopathic medical schools give the degree doctor of osteopathic medicine known as DO well to get into either medical school whether MD or DO, you need to take one simple exam. You need the MCAT. And you need your GPA from college. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I want you to understand that these two numbers are the biggest and the most important, by far the most important that's going to get into medical school. Let me tell you what, if you're in college right now and you're contemplating on becoming a doctor in the United States, focus on your GPA, your grade point average. Keep your grade point average between a 3.4 to a 4.0. The higher the better. However, I don't want you to cry if your GPA is less than 3.4 3.3, even if you're in the 3.0 the 3.3 range, I don't want you to be discouraged. You can still get into medical school. And we're going to talk about that in part two. Focus on getting A's in every single class. A's or B's. Preferably, you want to be getting A's because the more A's you have, the higher your GPA. Because once you get a C, ah. <sighs> It's going to drop down your GPA and it's very hard to bring it up. It's very hard. So I always, this is how I think of something. Always prevent something from happening, then try to fix it when it's broken. But you know what? Don't be discouraged. It's okay. Most people always say, oh my God, I got to see in organic chemistry. Will I ever get into medical school? Yes, you will get into medical school. It might just be a little bit, you might need a curveball. Another pathway to help you boost your application. But remember, keep your GPA 3.4 to 4.0. I just call it, this is called the safety net. Safety net GPA. MCAT. Let's talk about the MCAT. What scores do I need to get on the medical college aptitude test to get into medical school? You hear numbers, people are saying, oh, you need a 30, you need a, you know what? Here's my bet. If you get a score above a 29, between 29 and 44, 45, which is the highest score, you know you're going to be able to get into medical school. So why am I so particular about these scores? Here's the reason. There's thousands and thousands of applicants applying to medical school. If you think you're the only one, no. There's a lot of people applying. So let me put out some numbers. Let's pick medical school A. Med school A. Right? 
and medical school A gets about 5,000 application. 5,000. That is a lot of people. So let's say you're in California and the medical school is getting 5,000 application, for example, or any part of the country, and they only have 100 seats. They only have 100 seats in the class. Well, think about it. What are your chances of getting a spot if you're one out of 5,000 people applying to this medical school? Still do the math, right? 100 over 5,000 times 100. Two, two percent. That means your chances of getting to medical school when you apply to just this medical school A is only two to three percent. Well, that is a small number, but believe it or not, that is the truth. So why is this MCAT score important? Because the higher your MCAT score, the higher your chances of getting in. So here's my advice for you when you're studying for the MCAT. You're gonna hear people say, oh, you know, my friend studied for two weeks and he banked it out, he got a 35. You are not your friend. Number one, know yourself. All right? So here's my rules. Know your self. Both your strengths and your weaknesses. Now, why did I say that? It's because don't follow other people's footsteps. Let's say you're a junior in college right now, and you have, you said, I'm going to spend my summer of my junior year to prepare for the MCAT. I'm going to spend three months of hardcore studying and prepare for the exam and do really well. That is your goal. So you set your goals. Now, most people want to, they're being told, oh, take the exam in your junior year of college so you can apply in your senior year and get into medical school right away. That is true. You should do that, but only on one condition. Remember that 2% number? You want to be in that 2%, and the only way you're going to be in that 2% is by doing really well. One time. One time only. So, my best advice, listen to this very important announcement I'm about to tell you. This is the best advice I can ever give you to get into medical school. When you are studying for your MCAT, if you're not scoring between 29 and 45, please do not take the exam. Let me repeat that again. When you take your assessment test, so emcat.com, right? emcat.com is the website where you go and access questions, sample questions. Now, let me tell you what those sample questions are for. Let's say you've been studying for the last three months and you've been preparing verbal, chemistry, organic chemistry, you studied. And then you have, I think, about seven or to nine assessment test. The point of this assessment test is to test you of how much do you know now. So John has been studying for the, studying for the last three months and then he decides to go on emcat.com, registers, buy a QBank question and does the question and he scores, here's his scores. He's got verbal, he scores a 10. Uh, physical sciences, he scores an 11. On uh, biological sciences, it scores a 12. Now let's do the aggregate. Every time you take each assessment test, it's scoring between a 9 and a 10 on his verbal, a 10 and 11, and between a 9 and 12 on each test. So let's add up. That's 18. That's still 28. 28 is a good score. But I said 29 or 30, because the higher your number, the better you are. When you take your assessment test, test and let's even make this a 10. So we kind of stay. 
If you score between 29 and 33, I can guarantee you that is what you're going to get on the real exam. They're called assessment tests for a reason. They assess how much knowledge you've accumulated over the period of time you've been studying for the exam. And when you take the test, because these tests are very valid and extremely reliable, which means they have tested this exam over thousands of people. So when you take it, and you're scoring between 29 and 33, I can guarantee you, you're not gonna score 40 on the test. That will never happen. I guarantee you that. You will never score. So people would do, oh, you know, I'm doing all right. I'm scoring between, you know, 28, you know, on the real exam, something's just magically gonna happen, and I'm gonna score 40. No, that's not gonna happen. More or less, your score is most likely gonna be plus or minus two. It's gonna go that you might score between a 27 and a 31, or a 33 and a 35, okay? It might go by one or two points, but you're not gonna have a huge jump, because people always think that. And people make this mistake. People start, to, you start studying for the exam, right? And you're scoring between 21 and 24, or 25 on your practice test. Don't take the test, do not take the exam you are not ready you're not ready yet and don't let the pressure of people around you telling you oh you know I took the MCAT and I got a 31 don't let them bother you because this is your life you're paying thousands of dollars for this exam it's not worth it you want to do it one time think of it like a wedding day you got to do all the preparation make sure the camera mine is right the food is proper the location and then you want to make it one shot deal so I'm begging you please if your score is between the low 20s, stop. Don't say, oh, I already registered for what? July 29, I have to go take it, and if I don't do well, I'll just take it again. Why go through the pain twice? I don't want you to do that. I only want you to take this exam one time. So what do you do? Let's say you're scoring between 21 and 24, and every time, and I notice, a lot of people's problems are verbal. Some people could be biology. It depends on your strengths and weaknesses. So if you're scoring four and five on your verbal and you're constantly scoring a 10 or 11 or 12 or biological sciences, this is not good because this verbal is gonna bring down your MCAT scores. So what do you do? You do tons and thousands and thousands and thousands of practice question even if you have to take your time even if that three months is not enough extend it to six months until you're getting your dream score so whatever score you want to get between that 29 and 45 if you want to get a 42 yeah if you're scoring between the 40s and 39 now you're ready to take the test all right so how do you do well on the MCAT questions do thousands of questions now you might say this is a crazy idea well I wish somebody told me this when I was taking the test but I'm glad I became a doctor but for you you've been preconditioned to always read right study take the exam the teacher in class you read you prepare and you get an A that is always true as long as you're in college or high school or middle school. But for the MCAT, I want you to focus on doing a lot of questions. When you study, you do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions, and the question is going to guide you in the direction of how they want you to think about the exam. Something as simple as this. Let's pick physics. One of the most dreadful, oh my God, right? F equals to MA. Very simple, right? Force is directly proportional to mass times acceleration. However, when you're studying, they just don't want you to memorize a formula. A monkey can do that. They want you to see the relationship between F is directly proportional to the mass, and force is also directly proportional to acceleration. However, if you look at just MA, mass is inversely proportional to acceleration, which means if I increase my acceleration, I'm going to decrease my mass. Or if I increase my mass, 
I'm gonna decrease in acceleration. Let me make it in English. Let's think of somebody that is 20 pounds in weight. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, that'd be like a squirrel, right? Exactly, 20 pounds. And you take somebody that's 300 pounds in weight and you tell them to run, accelerate. Let's see which one is gonna run faster. The one has the bigger mass, bigger mass or smaller mass, which one is gonna think is gonna run faster. Of course the squirrel is gonna outbeat this 300 pound guy, which means the lower the mass, the higher the acceleration. That is how they want you to think. And if somebody's really, really big, 300 pounds or beast fat, and he can't really get off the ground, it's gonna be slow. See how that is completely different from saying F equals to MA? Exactly, exactly. A and also, as you can see, the force is gonna be directly proportional to the mass. If my mass is very high, if I'm very heavy, if I try to punch you, will you think it's gonna be a lot of force? Yeah, because it's directly proportional. The same thing if I'm running really, really fast and my acceleration is so fast, what's gonna happen to my force? Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of force. Now, that's just an example out of tons of ways how they want you to study. But if you're like the regular student who's just memorizing F equals to MA, you won't get it. That's why I want you to prepare and put in the time. We're gonna talk about studying for the MCAT in part two.